this table contain about the medication list commonly used in maternities. So this table, common medication used in maternity. The first one, ketosin, or some books say ketone. Ketone is a derivative of oxytocin. And oxytocin, a naturally occurring hormone in the body. And ketone, we use to induce or speed up the labor and contraction. So what are the indication of ketone? We use it for labor induction, or we use ketone for postpartum hemorrhage. It is very important every student must know Excessive ketone can induce too many contractions and diminish the amount of oxygen that's rich and unborn child. So when you give the ketone, it is important to monitor mother and fetal heart rate because ketone have some side effect what it is. It can cause hypox, hyponatremia, painful contraction, or contraindication if or in uterine hypertonicities. Let me recap it. The common side effect of ketone is co can cause pressure is elevated right? Also, it is, can cause excessive, painful contraction, tetanic contraction. Sometimes oxygen decrease in fetus or can cause cardiac dysarrhythmia. Even ketone can cause irregular, irregularities in fetal heart rate or few mother complain nausea and vomiting. So when you discontinue ketone, in what medical condition? Discontinue with sustained uterine contraction and also fetal desiccation if fetal heart rate less than the normal range, we should stop the ketone. Or decrease urinary output. So if you give the ketone, it is important to monitor intake and output. So if decrease the urine output, it is good to stop the ketone. The second drugs in this table, Tarbutalin, right? So tarbutalin is used to treat the wheezing or shortness of breath from lungs problem. Basically, we use for asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, so-called COPD, or bronchitis emphysema. But tarbutalin, we also use for preterm labor, right? Or it is given within 37 weeks or long, long maturities. So when you give the tarbutalin, it is important to monitor the side effect of tarbutalin. The most common side effect, they can cause tremor and nervousness. This too is the most common side effect. Tarbutalin also cause hypertension, trachycardia. So check the pulse prior to administration and hold it if pulse is over 120, sorry, 150, 150 or 120.
So arbutalin, when good to discontinue if patient is restless or if patient have a hyperglycemia, right? So tarbutalin also can cause some drug and drug interaction. So before taking this medication or before prescribe this medication, tell your healthcare provider if you have had or if your patient have had, have had like heart disease, abnormal heartbeat, ischemic heart disease, or very high blood pressure, it is good to avoid. If patient has a seizure or overacting thyroid, like hyperthyroidism, if patient has an uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, it is good not to give tarbutalin. So that's, he, you can say tarbutalin. It, the pronunciation is T-E-R, B and also U T A L I N E tarbutalin. So is it I said T E R B B is B agonist. B stand for B agonist. B stand for bronchodilator for the breathing. So tarbutalin act as a bronchodilator. And also I said tarbu, T-A-L-I-N-E, tar, it is tarni, uh, terminate uterine contraction, right? So if your patient have a asthmatic patient on a new drugs, it is good to give. But this medication can cause muscle tremor. So it is good. And next drugs is here, Maxalf. Or magnesium sulfate. So magnesium sulfate, this medication is a uh, mineral supplement, basically. Maxalf means magnesium. We use to prevent and treat low amount of magnesium in the blood. Right? So, first of all, Maxalf, when we use pregnancy induced hypertension. Right? So pregnancy induced hypertension, if mother have it, they can see hypertension, weight gain or edema develop and proteinuria. So when a pregnant mother have proteinuria, weight gain or edema and hypertension, this three together we, we called pregnancy induced hypertension we give them magnesium sulfate. Pregnancy-induced hypertension, mother present with headache, hyperreflexia, visual disturbance, or decrease the urine output. So pregnancy-induced hypertension, if you do not treat, it can lead to developed the other complications like eclampsia or preeclampsia. So if mother have high blood pressure with seizure or convulsion, right? It is maternal hypertension and eclampsia because of seizure, high blood pressure and convulsion of scissor, eclampsia, we give magnesium sulfate. But when we give magnesium sulfate, it is important to monitor mother 
to see the side effect. So keep it note, magnesium sulfate, the clinical use, prevention and treatment of seizure in pregnant mother or prevention and treatment of seizure or convulsion in eclampsia or severe pre-eclampsia. So sometimes NCLEX would ask, what are the doses of Maxalt? We use four gram IV state, then one gram per hour to be continued 24 hour after last season. The magnesium sulfate have some side effect, like client may feel hot and flush, headache, dizziness, lethargy, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea. Sometimes nystagmus, bradycardia, and hypotension. So most common side effect, nausea, vomiting, and flushing. And as I told you, some patient complain of feeling drowsiness, confusion, loss of tendon reflex. This is the question and flex board asks. Or patient develop arrhythmia and cardiac arrest because of toxicity. So we have to monitor the max self. If magnesium, magnesium is level go down, we give, we give magnesium sulfate. But when you give magnesium sulfate, you again check the magnesium level because, because of magnesium sulfate, magnesium level turns to go up and develop the magnesium toxicity. So urinary output, we will check electrolyte imbalance have a chance to develop. So the side effect for neonate hypotonia, magnesium level usually five to eight milligram per DL are normal. So when we see the patient have any magnesium sulfate toxicity, right? Check the patellar reflex in the newborn. If it is absence, means toxicity development. So magnesium sulfate is relatively safe and it is the drugs of choice for eclampsia or pre-eclampsia, but we need to check the magnesium level to prevent the toxicity. Because sometimes develop muscular paralysis means diminish the knee jerk. Also can cause respiratory failure, renal function to be monitored. If max self is too much, we give them antidote, we call calcium gluconate. It is the antidote of magnesium sulfate. Basically, we give injection of calcium gluconate 10%, 10 ml IV as an antidote. So next drugs is here, erythromycin. Erythromycin is an antibiotics we use for eye infection or as we use as an eye ointment. Erythromycin is a member of the group of antibiotics we call macrolids. In the macrolids, the other medication, erythromycin, clarithromycin, clindamycin, and erythromycin. So erythromycin, when you give, it is important to monitor the side effect. Like common side effect are nausea, 
vomiting, and diarrhea. Some of the patients develop thrombocytopenia or abdominal pain or taste change or up superinfection is also common. So erythromycin used to prevent chlamydia and gonorrhea in the newborn. So we are talking this medication in the list of med medication using maternity and newborn care. Sometimes erythromycin we use for the treatment of acne, right? What are the other indications of this medication? Easy way to explain. Uh, erythromycin is indicated in the treatment of infection causes by some bacteria or organism in the treatment basically that causes the upper respiratory tract infection of mild to moderate degree causes by streptococcus pyogen or streptococcus pneumonia. So when we give electromycin, we could monitor to see the side effect. Most common side effect, as I told you, it is, can cause even skin irritation if you give them acne ointment, dry skin, or so interaction is important to know, right? And another drugs we use, this is methadgin, used for postpartum hemorrhage and Contraindication of methargin if patient have pregnancy induced hypertension, it is good not to use. And this medication we used for use after the child birth to heal, to stop the bleeding from the uterus. Very important postpartum hemorrhage. Side effect can cause headache, can cause nausea, vomiting, hypotension or hypertension, dizziness, diaphoresis, and cramping. So in maternity, it's most important or most common side effect, uterine cramps. And other side effects are very minor. So if any other side effect persist or worsen, it is important to inform to the healthcare provider or pharmacist, like headache, nausea, vomiting, and dizziness, right? So if your patient has a kidney problem, liver problem, high blood pressure, heart disease, or high cholesterol, smoking the tobacco user, it is good not to prescribe methargin. So rubella vaccine, next drug. So rubella vaccine is a vaccine we use to prevent the rubella, right? And rubella vaccine is effectiveness begins after the two weeks after a single dose and about 95% people become immune. So keep, keep it, in mind, rubella vaccine, also called German measles. Rubella is a disease caused by the virus that is spread easily by coughing or sneezing. So rubella is serious for the pregnant women and their unborn babies, very important. A vaccine, has stopped the spread of rubella in United States, but it is still a problem in worldwide. And most of the US uh, cases are brought in by the people who get it while traveling. 
So if you ask me, what are the common symptoms of rubella or German measles? Patient present with mild fever, red eye, swollen lymph node, and rash the spread from face to tongue. If rubella is not treated, it can it can cause complication like temporary arthritis, swelling of the brain. For the pregnant women, it can cause miscarriage or stillbirth. It is important to know. Usually, we prescribed misela, including MMR vaccine. MMR stands for measles, mumps, and rubella. It is very important to know for your medical career. If you give rubella vaccine, make sure or check for egg allergies first. So if your patient has a egg allergy, it is good not to give rubella vaccine. Or rubella, you can give combined with measles and mumps, or you can give separately. It is super important to educate your patient, do not get pregnant within three months after take the rubella vaccine. Hmm? So given to the mother at the time of discharge from hospital after the delivery and educate them to avoid the pregnancies for next three months. This next medication here, hemabred, or it is called carboprost. Carboprost or hemabred we clinically use for postpartum hemorrhage, right? So treat for the postpartum hemorrhage after other methods have failed. The common side effect, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Sometimes complain about abdominal cramping or flushing. Even some mother causes about the bronchospasm, dyspnea, and even pulmonary edema developed. Right? So usually, hemabred or carboprost, we give the doses to 50 microgram deep intramuscular injection. And it is repeated every 15 minutes, maximum eight doses are allowed to give. Next drug is RHO gram. And when we need to give to the patient. So RH of gram is the injection used to treat RH incompatibilities during the pregnancy. And that short contains the antibodies. Right? Antibodies that stop the immune system from reacting to the baby's RH. Let me explain a little bit more. RHU gram is indicated for RS negative mother. Imagine RS negative mother and RS positive father or RS negative women met with RS negative men or RH negative women met with RH positive men and conceive a child. The RH negative women with RH positive feeders. That times we prescribe RH O gram. So mother who is RH negative with the RH positive baby the mother cell from RS positive fetus entered to the mother's bloodstream. And women 
become sensitized antibodies from and to fight RS positive blood cell. In the next RS positive pregnancy, maternal antibody attack the fetal red blood cell. To prevent all of this, we prescribed RHO gram. Next drugs here, common opioid. So common opioid we use to reduce the pain, right? So what is the other common prescription opioid? Hydrocodine, oxymorphine, morphine, or codeine. It is called common opioid. Opioid are the class of drugs used to reduce the pain and prescription opioid can be prescribed by the doctor to treat the moderate to severe pain, but can also have a serious risk and side effect. The common type of opioid, as I told you, oxycodone, hydrocodone, morphine, mepiridine, or fentanyl. Naloxone hydrochloride, Naloxone hydrochloride we use for treatment of respiratory depression. This medication is used for the emergency treatment of known or suspected opioid overload. Right? So I give you opioid for pain, but it is can cause overload, then we need naloxone hydrochloride because opioid can cause respiratory failure. The next drug says, so this medication is used to treat the infertilities in the women and give to the patient and they can conceive. So infertility, in clomid induced ovulation by changing the hormonal effect on ovary may result in multiple gestation. And the drugs is hydrolazine hydrochloride. This is the anti-hypertensive medication treat the hypertension in pregnancies. Last medication here is prostaglandins. So, so prostaglandins or like the drugs, any of the groups are compound with various hormone-like effect, right? It is very important to know prostaglandin, promotion of uterine contraction, right? So if you ask me, what are the uses of prostaglandin? Prostaglandin are used to control excessive bleeding after giving the bath. Or manage the patient ductus arteriosus, a condition in which the ductus arteriosus does not close in, in an infant after the bath. Also prostaglandin we use for terminate the pregnancy. The next drug here it is herbal, jingningxing. We use to avoid the jingningxing in pregnancy and lactation. So if mother under the lactation or in the pregnancy, it is good to avoid the herbal or genetic thing. 